This bill, this bill is kind of a, I guess it's a response to or a follow-up on uh, Senate Bill 2, which, or Act 2, which passed earlier this session. I'll kind of rehash a little bit for the reasons for this bill and why this bill is here today. Um, that bill dealt with the contributory uh, negligent contributory li liability theory uh, with regard to products liability. It came out of a variety of cases, but I think the most notorious case, you want to call it that way, um, was a case in which lead paint uh, are concerned, is a concern in a case in which lead paint manufacturers may be sued by people who claim that lead paint in a house uh, resulted in elevated um, lead levels in children, which may have a negative effect on the health consequences. Um, in a case, uh, the court ruled that you do not have to show which paint company, in essence, had paint in that house. And so you understand most of these cases involve houses that were built before 1930. So they go back uh, uh, and they claim that any one of several paint companies could have been the paint company whose paint was used in a house at that time. And as the result, a variety of paint companies or a variety of companies who made uh, ingredients in that paint may be sued. Uh, it became apparent subsequent to the time of that bill being signed that many, many court cases were filed at the last minute to try to take advantage of companies that were producing paint maybe at the turn of the last century. There are a variety of public policy problems here. Um, no one is disputing the fact, though that is questionable as well, that today that companies should perhaps be held liable if they produce paint which is used in the process. However, there is a concern that when these decisions, primarily the Mr. Thomas decision came out, that it retroactively dramatically changed for these paint companies stores. I mean, after all, I don't care what type of product you are producing, I think when a manufacturer produces a product, they have to be aware that maybe someday they're going to be sued for liability. We have here a situation in which their exposure was retroactively greatly increased because of a court decision which uh, came up with this contributory liability thing in which they said any individual company can be liable not only for the product they produce, but any other company that produces a similar product. And uh, this retroactive change to the law is, is just quite frankly a very scary court decision. And uh, you know, who can go into business, I don't care what you're producing, if you, if 80 years later a court can say you're not only doing something wrong yourself, but you're on the hook for anybody else who's producing the same product, uh, you're on the hook for them as well. So the purpose of this bill is to say that the effects, particularly with regard to contributory negligence, uh, the blend effect for Act Two, apply to all cases, regardless of whether they were when they were filed. And in particular, I think some of the people in your testimony today might not like this bill, are here because they want uh, that Thomas decision to apply to cases which were filed immediately uh, before this bill became effect. And it seems to me that when a court does something as outrageous as was done as Thomas. Uh, when they retroactively tell businesses that were producing paint in 1900 or 1910 that not only can you be liable for damages, if there were damages, and that's question, uh, for uh, pigment or for ingredients in paint, but you have to be liable for paint produced by any paint company in the United States in 1900. And, and that obviously, you, you cannot operate commerce with, with that type of decision made. Um, again, this decision will not result in these cases not moving forward, but it does mean these cases have to move forward under what we thought the law was 25 years ago, which means they have to find out which company is producing this thing. Thank you for your... Oh, I'm sorry, were you... No,